Today I'm gonna present you with the ultimate guide to the weirdest houses of LA. I'm not much of an intro girl, so let's just get right to it. The first one on the list is probably one of my favorites and one that I passed by so many times, Dr. Doolittle's house, aka Beverly Hills Children's Zoo, located on Doheny Drive. I've heard some rumors that it will be closing soon, so make sure to visit it before it's gonna close. Even though it has nothing to do with Dr. Doolittle, this is how I imagine his real house to be. The patio is full of statues of various animals and it's really one of the most interesting houses you will ever see. Every year around Halloween, I pay a visit to my favorite house in Beverly Hills, the Witch's House, AK Spadena House, even though I will call it forever the Beverly Hills Witch's House. You would think that witches live in forests only, but no, they live in fancy areas as well. Spadena House looks like the house from Hansel and Greta fairy tale, and no matter how many times I've been to see it, it's always like going to Disneyland to me. If the house seems familiar to you, you've probably seen it in movie Clueless. But let's talk more about the history of the house. The house was designed by Hollywood art director Harry Oliver, who went on to play a major role in storybook architecture. It was originally built in 1921 to serve as the offices and dressing rooms for Irvin Wireless Film Studio in Culver City. When the studio closed, the Spadena family moved the home to its current location in Beverly Hills where it has been since 1926. In 1997, the house needed a lot of renovation, so it was put up for sale. After most buyers wanted to tear it down, which seller of course didn't allow, the realtor Michael Lebo, who was selling it, fell under the spell of the house and decided to buy it himself. He has been living there ever since. Spadena House is located on 516 North Walton Drive and it's listed as protected landmark number 8 in the city of Beverly Hills. As for now, no tours are available but you're welcome to snap a photo outside. The house is also the subject of many urban legends. Some say the house was built by a Snow White and Seven Dwarfs fanatic. Others have claimed that the house was built for a movie version of Hansel and Gretel. I personally think the witch is hiding somewhere around there for sure and the owner doesn't even know. What do you think? When looking into the weirdest houses of LA, there is one you can't miss and you've probably seen it a tons of times in the movies and TV shows, the Shell House. Beverly Hills 90210 fans might remember getting a glimpse of the home in the first season episode the first time. It also made a brief appearance in Richard Gere's 1983 film, Breathless. It's located just north of Santa Monica Boulevard, but the most interesting part it's not the front of the house but rather the guest house which is located in the back the official name is the o'neill's house but i like to call it the shell house this is definitely one of the more unique structures in beverly hills this house which has a striking resemblance to antonio gaudi was constructed in 1980s by Don O'Neill, owner of an art deco shop. After seeing how well their guest house turned out, Don and his wife Sandy made the decision to reconstruct the main portion of the house in the same design as the guest house. Sadly, Don died before the project was complete but his wife Sandy was able to finish the full house to his original design specifications in 1988. As the book Los Angeles Attractions states, the house has five bedrooms, six baths, a library, pool and the maid's quarters. One more interesting detail, every room was built in a round or oval shape. 
It wouldn't be fair not to include a famous architect's residence, so I drove all the way to Santa Monica to see Frank Gehry's interesting house. In 1978, Frank Gehry built his first Santa Monica house after surveying a gambrel-roofed Dutch colonial bungalow. To describe the house in his own words, I loved the idea of leaving the house intact. I came up with the idea of building the new house around it. We were told there were ghosts in the house. I decided they were ghosts of cubism. The windows, I wanted to make them look like they were crawling out of this thing. At night, because this glass is tipped, it mirrors the light in. So when you're sitting at this table, you see all these cars going by. You see the moon in the wrong place. The moon is over there, but it reflects here. And you think it's up there, and you don't know where the hell you are. <laughs> Architectural historians and critics describe the project as a house trapped within a foreign body or dressed up. Gary covered the house in layers of frugal, unfinished materials like corrugated metal and chain link, reflecting his at the time somewhat constrained resources. Gary accepted the task of demonstrating that anything can be turned into art, even chain link. While in the area, let's see another very interesting house, the Mosaic Tile House. This vibrant house is the creation of married artists Cherry Pan and Gonzalo Duran, who made changes to their beachfront property. Small elements dotted around the interior and outer spaces show how their work mirrors the love from which it's born. From photos of the two together to dinnerware, they collected from the yard sales and shattered into pieces. What might catch your eye is a black bridge filled with dolls that Penn has referred to as the dark half of her mind, as well as a fruit tree and a vegetable garden blended into the tiling landscaping. So if you ever find yourself in Venice, drive about a mile to the east and you will find yourself in the front of the mosaic tile house. Not too far from the previous houses, you will find another storybook house, the Hobbit house. <laughs> Joseph Lawrence, a Disney artist, constructed this house over the course of 24 years from 1946 to 1970. The property consists of a number of round-roofed cottages with unusually shaped leaded glass windows, a rough home cupola and uneven roof tiles. It is affectionately known as the Hobbit House and like many others, it has been turned into apartments. I've even heard that some are for rent. <laughs> the Culver City Hobbit Home has a distinguished place in Hollywood history, known for housing actor Nick Nolte, Broadway actress Gwen Verdon and Frank Sinatra Jr. kidnapper Joseph Amsler over the years. LA Conservancy's page says this about the house. Joseph redesigned an existing single-family residence and added two two-story buildings with multiple units. An expert carpenter and sailor, he also created nautically themed interiors for the three buildings. If you go to visit it, it can sometimes be hard to spot because there's a few high rises around. But if you look close enough, you will find this hidden gem. <laughs> this concludes my presentation of the top weirdest houses of LA. I actually have many more videos to come that I filmed around the world. So please subscribe to stay tuned and enjoy your day. And one more thing. These are all private residences, so be mindful of that when you go to visit them. And that's pretty much it. Have a great day, my loves.